Welcome to I Just Have to Say Something, a conservative Hispanic perspective where we audit criminal, police, and civilian interactions to improve safety within our communities, supporting the Second Amendment, police accountability, to ensure our fundamental rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are never infringed. Please show your support for safer communities and the Second Amendment by hitting that like, subscribe, and notification bell. Today we have a video of a man who confronts three thieves breaking into his car. This concealed weapon holder ended up sending two out of the three to the hospital. If you're not into guns and you're just visiting this website to see what somebody who's pro second A says about this type of situation, the reason why I put the number of criminals versus the number of potential victims in my thumbnails for these videos is because it's a, it's a clear signal to the anti-gunners that you don't get to choose how many bad guys you may encounter just going about your life. This man was not a vigilante. He was just walking to his car in Chicago, the gun control utopia of the United States. And this nonsense happens day in and day out. You're also going to find that um, a common gun control narrative that we'll, we'll, we'll get into in just a little bit. Let's dive into this video. Police are still investigating the attack. They say it may have resulted from armed thieves trying to steal a man's car. And it was like pop, 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 pop. The moment Kyle Jurgensen heard it, he says he knew it was gunfire. I fell asleep with the window open and uh, woke up the gunshots and my dog's looking out the window freaking out. Uh, probably heard, I'd say, eight to nine shots. The gunshots rang out early this morning in the heart of the city's loop. When Chicago police say a concealed carry license holder exchanged gunfire with two men while the third person jumped out of the victim's car and ran off. You see all the smashing grabs that happen in broad daylight. So, you know, you can be a victim at any time of the day. One of the things that I found most frustrating growing up in a poor minority community in a rough part of the north side of Miami is that most of the advocates that call for gun control don't live in these neighborhoods. They're very middle class and they're actually very wealthy. If you look at the money that the gun control groups make, they are they have nothing but money. They got billionaires that are supporting them. But they really could give two shits about what's going on in these poor and minority communities. And here you have one woman that says the truth. You don't know when or where something bad's going to happen in these communities. You just don't know what happens. Now, the gun controllers will say, oh, you're just waiting to be a vigilante. You're just... Wanting to shoot somebody, and it's and again, I say all the time, no sane person that owns a gun that I've ever met wants to shoot somebody. It's it's just a liberal fantasy. And you going about your life, just walking out of your home, coming home, walking down the street, or walking to your car while somebody attacks you is not being a vigilante. That's just defending yourself, because everybody knows gun controllers want to control guns. And the reason why I don't take them seriously is because they never talk about the criminals that do violent actions with guns. They want to criminalize the innocent who just want to be able to protect themselves and ignore the ongoing epidemic of criminal violence. The violence erupted just before 4 o'clock Saturday morning near Randolph and Dearborn Streets. Investigators say it was as a 31-year-old man walked to his parked car from a nearby hotel that someone traveling in a red SUV started shooting at him. The man, who authorities say has both a legal firearms owner ID card and a concealed carry license, shot back, and the vehicle then sped away. When we first moved, it was there was nothing at all for like a month, and then it got, you know, on and off, got really bad. The victim was not hurt, but investigators say moments later, after the shooting, the same SUV involved in the shootout pulled up at the emergency room at Northwestern Memorial Hospital with a man in his 20s seeking treatment for a gunshot wound to his left knee. About the same time, another man in his 20s walked into Lurie Children's Hospital with a gunshot wound to the lower back. Now, for some who would say you're a conservative Hispanic, how the hell did that happen? Well, here's the big lie. That got me from being politically agnostic to becoming a conservative. You notice how they say that two of these 20-year-olds got sent to the hospital. One actually went to a children's hospital while the other went to a regular emergency room. What gun controllers always state is that there's so many young, innocent children getting hurt by gun violence and we've got to do something. Oh my goodness, what shall we do? And what they don't tell you is that the very vast majority of these poor, innocent children that get hurt by 
guns from the age of 14 and 15 to their early 20s are committing carjackings and crime and they're thugging and they're raping and they're murdering. And they get killed by their would-be victims or injured. When I found out that liberal politicians were using my ignorance and my emotions to sway me, it made me question everything they stated. And I tell you, the vast majority of what liberals tell you is about 10% truth and 90% BS that makes you feel sorry or pushes you toward their political agenda. At least that's been my experience. And that's what got me to the point where I'm at today. I've been very, very successful in my life and how as a first generation Hispanic in such a racist country, because I listen to everything that liberals say and do the exact opposite. And I've been doing freaking awesome. So you want to know how to succeed in America and be safe? You listen to what liberals tell you, and then you do the exact opposite, and you'll be just fine. You never know what's going to happen. It's, it's very unfortunate. Now, the two alleged attackers do remain in custody while detectives search for a third. Remember, this is at least the second incident in a week where a legally armed citizen has shot an alleged attacker trying to avoid becoming a victim of a crime. Reporting for Chicago's Loop, Evelyn Holmes, ABC7 Eyewitness News. It's great news that this is the second occurrence that a concealed weapons holder was able to successfully defend themselves. For the anti-gunners that are out there that may be listening to this channel, I will tell you, the whole more guns equals more crime is absolute BS. It should be virtually no gun violence in Chicago due to all the draconian gun control laws that they have. And yet it's like basically the murder capital of the United States, if, if not right behind Philly. It's outrageous. But before you say, well, if we just take the guns away, then the criminals won't have access to it. And I will ask you to look at what's going on in the UK. I will do a video on this. I read an article that there's a knife attack in the UK about every 11 minutes, and it is a tremendous problem. So even if you got rid of guns, things won't impact from a public safety standpoint until we all get serious about holding criminals accountable. It's not about the tool. It's about the criminal. You could put me in front of a thousand guns at an NRA show. And it would never occur to me to, to do violence on anyone. I don't know any gun owner that would just be like, hey, let's go rob a store. They'll be like, dude, free ammo, lots of guns. Let's go to the range. Let's, let's, you know, let's check this out. Let's check that out. But to go out and commit an act of violence toward anybody? No. Gun control doesn't work. The only thing that really works is to change our educational system so you can start giving people different opportunities and to lead a life of crime. And when people slip up and they make mistakes, you give them opportunity to correct. But if they commit a violent act with a weapon, and here's here's somebody who's very pro two A, will tell you, you commit a violent act with a gun. It should be like we had in Florida many many years ago. We had ten twenty life. You use a gun in the commission of a violent crime, you do a minimum ten years. You get ten calendars. Here you go. Have a nice day. You shoot that gun during the commission of a violent crime, you get twenty years. You hit someone or kill someone, you do life. You want to stop violent crime? If we're really serious about stopping gun crime in this country, there's two things the anti-gunners have got to do. One, work with the federal government to improve mental health. Half of what they call gun violence in America is, are actually suicides. And the United States does not lead the world in suicides. So even if you took away guns without the psychiatric help, you're not going to do anything for suicide. They'll find another mechanism. I, as a paramedic, I worked many suicides. Very few of them were guns. Most of them were drugs, were, were for prescription drugs. The second thing you do is you go after violent criminals, and especially violent criminals who have already been uh, released from jail, who are on parole, and they know the game. If you gun controllers were really serious, you'd be going after mental health, and you'd be going against criminals. Because if you did that, and we collectively pro-gun safety, because that's what you say you are, and the Second Amendment community can go, hey, I can get behind that. Having less people kill themselves, awesome. Having criminals being held to account for their actions, and you're not impeding on my rights, even better. But until we do those two things, I can't look at any gun control group and sit there and say, so your only answer is ignore the mental health issues that we have in this country, ignore the violent criminal activities that many of these guys do over and over and over again. And the only answer is to come to law-abiding citizens and say, you need to get rid of your gun because it makes me feel uncomfortable. Not the criminal, you.
oh, and by the way, we're going to defund your police because we're certainly not going to do it in my neighborhood. These rich Karens, when they call for defunding the police, I guarantee you it's not in their neighborhood. And even if, even if it is, if it's some kind of virtual signal, it's going to be replaced with private security, just like they do in many, many areas. So again, gun control only hurts, in most cases, black and brown communities and poor communities where they're the worst crime, the least uh, resource from a policing standpoint. And now liberal politicians want to add all these fees, training, this. It's just common sense. And all it does is it makes it harder for the poor and the working class, that single mom, that single dad, to be able to defend themselves. So they're stacking their cards against the innocent. And that's why I'm a conservative and I, and I don't apologize for it because liberals are harder on the innocent than they ever are on the guilty. Be safe. Make sure to carry safely and legally and always be ready to defend yourself and those that you love. Thank you for visiting. Please like and subscribe and share this video.